Merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. <laughs> Uh, 23, 26, 24, 25. Christmas Ratchet! Day. Uh, Ratchet! Yes, Stop that infernal caterwauling. Yes, sir. 9, 15, 17. Singing their idiotic Christmas carols at my very door. Go on, go on, get away from my door. Go somewhere else and belly your blasted carols or I'll give you... Why, Governor! It's an old custom at Christmas time, you know. Yes, and I don't want any of your old customs. Take your fellow fools and go away. Christmas. Ah. Ah. Right, sir. Merry Christmas anyway, sir. Ah. You get that letter from Higgins and Blackthorn, Cratchit. And then I want you to finish putting, uh, posting that ledger. And after that, you can pop over to Parthagill's and tell Ephraim Parthagill, you come for the 17 shillings and sixpence he owed me since Michaelmas. And tell him I shall have a constable over there if he doesn't pay at once. Uh, Mr. Pothergill's wife has been ill, sir. What do I care about his wife? I want my seventeen and six. I just thought it being Christmas that... Christmas, Christmas. You mention that one more time, Cratchit, and I'll... Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, Mr. Fred. God save you, Uncle. Ah, humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle. Now I'm sure you don't mean that. I mean just that, exactly that. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Well, what right have you to be dismal about Christmas, Uncle? You're rich enough. Ah. <laughs> now, Uncle, don't be cross. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools? What's, what's Christmas to you but a time for paying bills without money? Merry Christmas. A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. If I'd work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a steak of holly through its heart. He should be. Uncle! Now, nephew, you keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it, but you don't keep it, Uncle. <laughs> well, then let me leave it alone. What do you want, a Christmas gift, I have no doubt? I came to wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas. Much good Christmas has ever done you. <laughs> Much good has it ever done you at all. There are many things from which I derive good by which I have not profited materially, I dare say, Uncle. Uh, Christmas among the rest. But I have always thought of Christmas time as a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. And ah. therefore, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. God bless Christmas. Hurrah! <laughs> Let me hear another sound out of you, Cratchit, and I'll, you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. As to you, my nephew, I wonder why you don't go into Parliament, you talk some such nonsense. Don't be angry, Uncle. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? Come, dine with us tomorrow. I shall dine alone, thank you. But why? Why? Why did you get married? Why, because I fell in love with a wonderful girl. <laughs> well, and I fell in love with being alone. Good afternoon. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, I tried. A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year, too. Ah, oh, humbug! <laughs> and a Merry Christmas to you, Bob, and the missus, and to Tiny Tim. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fred. Same to you, sir. Good day, sir. Good day, Bob. Nonsense. Twaddle, flummery, talking of Christmas and not two sixpence to jingle together in his trouser pockets. You there, Cratchit! What, what are you doing there? I'm only putting a bit more coal in the fire, Mr. Scrooge, seeing it's so cold in here, sir. You put that coal back in the scuttle. A fire, a fire indeed, I can tell you. If you use coal at that rate, you and I will have a parting of company, Cratchit. You understand that? There's many a young fellow would like your situation, you know. I'm sorry, sir. M my fingers were getting a little stiff in the cold. Well, put your mittens on.
There's someone at the door. Go see who it is. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the firm of Scrooge or Marley. Yes, miss. Uh? Uh, have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley's been dead these seven years tonight. I'm Scrooge. Uh, well now, Mr. Scrooge, at this season of year, it's only fitting that we who are more fortunate should raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. You may not believe it, sir, but many thousands are now in want of common necessities and hundreds of thousands are in want of the simplest comforts. Are there no prisons? Well, there are plenty of prisons, sir. And the workhouses, they're still in operation, I trust? I wish I could say they are not, but they are, sir. And the treadmill and pool are, are in full vigor, then? <laughs> Both very busy, sir. Ah, glad to hear that. I was afraid from what you had said at first that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. No, sir. All these institutions that you mention are flourishing, but it's nevertheless true that some additional provision for the poor and the destitute must be made. Ah. Uh. A few of us, upon change, are endeavouring to raise such a fund, you see. And uh, what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Oh, I see. You wish to be anonymous, sir? I wish to be left alone. I don't make merry myself at Christmas time, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support the establishments that take care of the poor. They cost enough. Let those who are badly off go there. Many can't go there, sir, and many would rather die. Then my advice to them is to do so and decrease the surplus population. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ratchet, show this lady out. Uh, yes, sir. This way, miss, please. Miss, I couldn't help it over here. I should like to contribute tuppence. Gratchet. Yes, sir. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. But there are others in worse situations than I. You're a generous fellow. I wish I might say so of your employer. Gratchet. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Cratchit! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes, sir. Close the door. Yes, sir. 24, 31, carrier 3. Hmm. A new scarlet tuppet for Tiny Tim. Oh, and a comb for Martha. <laughs> 33, 3 and carry the 3. A hair ribbon for Belinda. <sighs> Four, seven, twelve, fifteen. Crutch it! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's too late to have you go to Parkhills now. He'll be closed up for Christmas like the other fools. We may as well close up the place now. Yes, sir. It is getting a little dark. Hard to see the figures. I suppose you'll want the entire day tomorrow? If it's quite convenient, sir. It is not convenient, and it's not fair either. But I suppose they can't do anything about it. <laughs> if I was to stop half a crown of your wages, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll bound. <laughs> well, sir, I, I think... But you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wage for no work? It's only once a year, sir. Once a year, once a year indeed. A fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Well... I suppose there's no good talking about it. You must have the whole day. See that you're here all the earlier the next morning, you understand? Oh, I will, sir. I will indeed. Good night, sir. And a Merry Christmas. <laughs> ah! Marley? Jacob? Marley? I could have sworn I saw the old humbug. Ah, Marley's been dead these seven years. Humbug, I tell you. Ah, what I need is a good night's sleep.
What's that? What's that? Someone's in the wine cellar. But the door's locked and double locked. Oh, something, something's coming. Some, something is coming outside my door. Bah, I, I, I don't believe it. It's, it's humbug. Still humbug. Oh. Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh. Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, Molly, no, no, no. What, what do you want with me? I want much of you, Ebenezer. Well, who, who are you? Ask me who I was. Well, the, all right then, who, who were you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley? But you're dead. You died seven years ago. Seven years ago this very night. <sighs> What's wrong, Ebenezer? <sighs> Don't you believe in me? I do not. You doubt your senses, Ebenezer. Yes, yes, because a, a, a little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheats. You can't be a ghost. You, you may be an undigested bit of beef or a, a blot of mustard or a crumb of cheese, a, a fragment of an underdone potato. <laughs> yes, 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 there may be more gravy than grave about you, whatever you are. By humbug, I tell you. Humbug! Oh, 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 oh. oh. All right, I, I believe in you. You, you are a ghost, Jacob. Thank you. But why do you, why do you walk the earth? Why do you come to see me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide to witness what it cannot share, but might have shared on earth and turned to happiness. But tell me, Jacob, what, what is that chain you wear about you? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard by my own free will. Is its pattern strange to you, Ebenezer? But cash boxes, keys and padlocks, ledgers and purses? Yours was as heavy and as long as this seven years ago. You have labored on it since, Ebenezer. Oh, Jacob, speak comfort to me, please. Comfort I have none to give. I cannot rest, I cannot stay, I cannot linger. Weary journeys lie before me. You travel fast? Yes, Ebenezer, on the wings of the wind. Oh, seven years dead and traveling all the time. Seven years, Ebenezer, seven years of remorse. Ebenezer, do you know that no space of regret can make amends for one life's opportunities misused? But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business. Mankind was my business. Charity, mercy, benevolence, they were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Oh, Jacob, Jacob, don't take on so. Listen to me, Ebenezer. I, I listen to you, Jacob. Go on, please. But, but, but please, don't be so flowery. Ebenezer. I am here to warn you that you have yet a chance of hope of escaping my fate. Do you hear that, Ebenezer? Yes. Yes, Jacob. You you were always a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. But 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 go on, go on. How shall I escape? I'm 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 afraid, Jacob. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the only chance and hope, Jacob? It is your only chance and hope. Well, then I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Oh, couldn't I take them all at once and have it over, Jacob? Ebenezer, look that for your own sake you remember what has passed between us. Remember, when the bell tolls one, look for the first spirit. Oh, Molly, Jacob... Jacob Marley! Oh. Oh. Who, who? Who is that? Ebenezer Scrooge, I have come for you. you, you are you the spirit 
Whose coming was foretold to me? I am that spirit. Who? What? What are you? I am the spirit of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. What? What do you want of me? What? What brings you here to haunt me? Your welfare, Mr. Scrooge. Now rise and walk with me. Oh no, 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 no! Not out the window. Why? I can't do that. I, I'll fall. I'm not a spirit. I'm a mortal, and I shall fall. There, but a touch of your hand on my heart, and you will be upheld in more than this. Now, come, walk with me. Wait. Where are we? What? What? What's become of the city? And 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 there's snow upon the ground. Where are we? These are the shadows of things that have been. Do you recognize this countryside? Oh, I know every inch of it, every rock, every tree. And that bleak building over there? Yes, that building. I was a boy there. Yeah, I went to school in that horrible place. Look through the window into that cold, barren room. What do you see, Ebenezer Scrooge? I see a boy. A solitary child, neglected by his family, alone. Yes, yes, I see. I know that boy. I was, I was so lonely. Poor boy. Fan. Oh, brother, dear brother. <laughs> Dear, dear Fan! I, I've come to bring you home. Home for good and ever. Home, little Fan? Yes, yes, home for good and all. Father is so much kinder than he used to be. He was in a pleasant mood just the other night. So I wasn't afraid to ask him once more if you might come home. And he said yes. He said yes, you should. And he sent me to bring you. Ebenezer, Father has arranged an apprenticeship for you. You're to be a man and begin your career. You'll never have to spend another moment in this dreadful school. But first, we'll have a Christmas. We'll have a Christmas together and have the merriest time in the world. A delicate, delicate child. A breath might have withered her. He dies a woman and uh, had, as I believe, children. One child. Your nephew. Yes. Yes, Fred, my nephew. I'm dying, dear brother. No, Fan, I, I can't let you. I, I. No time on this earth. It's nearing its end, I'm afraid. I can't go on without you, sweet sister. I leave behind my dear sweet babe for you. Please. Promise you look after him as if he were your own. I promise, my dear sweet fan. I love you, dear brother. Your lip is trembling, Scrooge, and uh, what is that on your cheek? It's nothing, nothing, nothing at all. I wish I. <sighs> It's too late now. Well, let's see another Christmas. I know this place. I I know it. This this is the counting house where I was apprenticed. And and look, it's it's my old master, bless her heart, Fezziwig, my master alive again and hosting one of her Christmas parties. Yo ho there, Ebenezer Dick. No more work tonight, my boys. It's Christmas Eve. Clear all this nonsense away. All of you, we must make room. Life is too short for all work and no play. <laughs> I say it's time for a party. That carefree young man with the light heart and the gay smile, do you recognize him? Oh, yes. Merciful heaven, how happy I was then. A small matter for old Fezziwig to make all those silly folks so full of joy. 
Small matter, small indeed. Isn't it? He has spent just a few pounds of your mortal money. Is that enough to deserve praise? Oh, it's not that. It's not that, Spirit. Old Fezziwig had the power to make us happy or unhappy, to make our, our service light or heavy. Her power lies in the words and looks and in the things so tiny that it's impossible to count them up. The happiness she gave was quite as great as if it cost her. What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Nothing at all, Spirit. Something, I think. Well, I, I, it's just that I, I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk, Verb Cratchit, that's all. Come. This is our last visit to the past, Ebenezer. Here, in this little room, with a fair young woman by your side, do you recognize yourself, Ebenezer? No, 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 please spare me this. You're an older man now, a man in the prime of his life. Your face has begun to show the signs of wear from care and avarice. Your eyes are greedy, the reckless, eager eyes of a miser. No, 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 please. And she knows it too, that girl by your side. Look, there's a tear in her eye. It matters very little to you, very little. I know that. Well, have I changed toward you? When we were engaged, we were both poor. Was it better then, better to be poor? Better at least to be happy. You're changed. You were another man then. I was a boy. You blame me because I've grown wiser? Have I ever tried to break our engagement? In words, no, never. In what then? Well, in a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any value in your sight. So I release you from your promise. Belle! Oh, at first it may cause you pain to lose me. A very brief pain. But soon it will be like a dim, half-remembered dream. An unprofitable dream. And you will be glad to be awake from such a dream. May you be happy in the life you've chosen, Ebenezer, for the love of whom you once loved. That's enough. That's enough. Show me no more. Take me home. These were the shadows of things that have been. That they are what they are. Don't blame me. No, no, no more, no more. Spirit, spirit, I can't bear any more. Leave me, haunt me no more. Take me back, take me back. Oh, come in, come in. Ebenezer Scrooge and know me better. Who, who are? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me, I'm sure you've never seen the likes of me before. But you're different from the other spirit and, and that, that great torch you carry. It lights pours in the homes of rich and poor alike. Spirit, take me where you will. Last time I went against my will and learned a lesson which is working on me now. If you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe, Ebenezer. Touch my robe. Where, where are we? Where, where have you brought me, Spirit? Where are we? I'm dwelling in a humble street. It's humble enough. Yet there is happiness here. Who, who are these people? Who's, who's that woman and, and the children? Well, these are the family of your clerk, Bob Cratchit, and his wife, dressed in a twice-turned gown, but brave in ribbons, laying the table for their Christmas dinner. A and there, assisting her, it's, it's her daughter Belinda. And the young man with the fork and the stuffing, that's Master Peter Cratchit. Here's Martha, mother. Why, bless your heart alive, Martha, my dear. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, mother. Oh, and how late you are, my dear. 
Oh, we deal of work to finish up last night and we had to clear away this morning. Oh, well, never mind. So long as you're here now, sit ye down before the fire and have a warm, Lord bless ye. Where's father? Oh, he's been to church with Tiny Tim. They'll be along directly. How is Tiny Tim, mother? A any better at all? Sometimes I think he is. And sometimes I think, oh dear God, if anything should happen to Tiny Mother, you mustn't think of such a thing. Here they are. Oh, there's Tiny Tim. Merry Christmas, everybody. Martha, welcome, my dear. Merry Christmas, Father. And Tim. Merry Christmas, Martha. Oh, Tim, you darling. Oh, Father, I'm so glad to be home. And we're glad to have you, Martha. And how did little Tim behave in church, Bob? Oh, as good as gold and better. I liked church, Mother. Oh, they sang the nicest songs. I hope people saw me there. Saw you there? And why, Tim? Well, don't you see? Because I'm lame. And if they saw my crutch, it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas who it was made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Oh, bless you, my son. Ready to eat, mother? Yes, yes, children, we're all ready. Come, come, take your places now. Uh, now, my dears, shall we say grace? Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. Well, I see a vacancy in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. Oh, no, no, kind spirit. Say he'll be spared. Please say he'll live. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, Ebenezer, the child will die. Amen. 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 And now, my dears, with such a dinner, a toast. Merry Christmas to all, and God bless us. Amen. Merry God bless us, everyone. And now to Mr. Scrooge. I give a toast to Mr. Scrooge. The founder of the feast. Oh, the founder of the feast indeed. Who pays you all of 15 shillings a week? I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast on and I'd hope he'd have a good appetite for it. Oh, my dear, the, the children, Christmas day. Well, it should be Christmas day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Bob. No one knows it better than you, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. I'll drink his health for your sake and the days, not for his. A long life to him. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. And I say, God bless him too, Mother, and everyone. My life on this globe is very brief. It, it ends tonight. Tonight? Tonight, at midnight. Oh, look, the time has come. <laughs> oh, no, no, not yet, yet. Please, please, there's still more things I wish to learn. I. These you will learn from still another spirit. Still another spirit, Ebenezer. Uh, I. I know you, you are, are the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You will show me the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in time for us. Please answer me, spirit, ghost of the future. I fear you more than any other specter I've seen. Yet I know your purpose is to do me good. And as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, lead on, lead on. The night's waning fast and time is precious. Spirit, why, why have you brought me here? This is the Cratchit home, but it's it's not the same. Why? Why is it so very quiet here? Mother, mother, please. Dear 
you mustn't. It's almost time for father to be home. Don't, don't let him see you crying. Yes. Yes, Martha. He's late tonight. He walks slower than he used to. And yet I've known him to walk very fast indeed with tiny Tim on his shoulder. So have I, mother. But he was light to carry. And his father loved him so that it was no trouble. No trouble. Good evening, my dear. <sighs> You're late. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, my dear. I, I went to the churchyard today. I wish you could have gone with me. It would have done your heart good to see how sweet and green a place it is. But you'll see it often. I, I promised him. Yes, I, I promised Tiny Tim we'd walk there on a Sunday. Father, dear. It is God's will. I'm trying to understand it, my dear. My son. My little son, Tiny Tim. And I loved him so. Mother, that is so cruel, cruel spirit. Can't you give me one way of hope that I may change all that, that Tiny Tim may live? Wait, where are you taking me now? Here on a common street, spirit? What is there for me to learn here? Who, who are those women? I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. Well, when did he die? Last night, I believe. Ought to be a cheap funeral. I don't know anyone is going to go to it. Can we make a party of it and volunteer? I don't mind going if a lunch is provided. <laughs> Spirit, help me. Who is this man that died? Is, is there no one to mourn that poor creature? No one to follow him to the grave? Perhaps they'll give him a, a green grave, at least, like poor tiny Tim. Perhaps, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, Spirit. Where are we now? Oh, merciful heaven, a churchyard overrun by grass and weeds, choked with too much burying. Desolate, lonely, crumbling gravestone spirit. Before I draw nearer to that gravestone, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of things that will be, or are they the, the shadows of things that may be only? Will you please, please speak to me now? Spirit, oh, spirit. What is that grave to which you point? I I see it. I see it. That, that, yes, I see the writing on that stone. The name, the name of the gravestone is Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge. No, no, spirit, no, no, please hear me. I'm not the man I was. Why, show me if, if, if I'm past all hope. Tell me that I can change these dreadful shadows you've shown me by an altered life. I'll honor Christmas in my heart. I'll try to keep it all year. I shall live in the past, the present, and the future, and I shall not shut out the lessons that you teach. Please, spirit, go tell me. Tell me what I can sponge away the writing on that stone. Spirit, I beg of you, I beg of you, please, spirit. I'm on my knees, I promise, I... I... But this is my, my own room, my, my home, my own bed, and, <laughs> and, 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 the, and the sun, the sun is shining, it's, it's clear, it's bright, no fog, oh, what a beautiful day, glorious, glorious day, oh, li little girl, young, young lady, uh, hello, y yes, sir, what, what's today, what's that, sir, what day is it, my dear, day i mean well it's it's christmas day ah christmas day that i haven't missed it i haven't the spirits have done it all in one night all in one night heaven be praised <laughs> how's that sir now listen my lass you know where the poulterer is over on the next street i should say so ah very intelligent girl remarkable girl tell me do you know if they still have the prized turkey that was hanging in the window the one that's as big as me. <laughs> the one as big as you. Yes, delightful child. Yes, my dear. It's hanging there now, sir. That's wonderful. Go down there 
and tell them to send it to Bob Cratchit and his family on the on Broad Street. And mind you, they're not to know who paid for it. Now go along, hurry, hurry, my dear. Oh, here, wait, 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 wait. Oh, here's, here's half a crown for your trouble. <laughs> yes. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to you, my dear. Yes, son, oh. a Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm light as a feather, happy as an angel, and I'm merry as a schoolboy. Merry Christmas, everybody. A Merry Christmas to everyone, and Happy New Year to the world. Oh, 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 hello, hello. I beg your pardon? My, my dear miss, how do you do? How do you do? Well, aren't, aren't you the lady who came to my office in regard to that charity? Why, yes, sir. A Merry Christmas to you. Uh, y yes, sir. Allow me to ask your pardon, miss, and will you please have the goodness to accept, I prefer to whisper this. What? But Lord bless me. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please, now, and not a farthing less, a great many back payments are included in that, I assure you. Will you do, the, do that favor for me? Well, my dear sir, I don't know what to say to such magnificence. No, 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 don't say anything. Please come and see me. Will you do that? Come and see me. Yes, I will. I will indeed. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I am much obliged to you. Thank you 50 times. Bless you and Merry Christmas. Now, who could that be? I don't know. I'm no one's expected at this hour. Hello, Fred. <gasps> uncle Scrooge. The very same. It is I, your Uncle Scrooge. I recall an invitation you made to me yesterday to come and dine with you, and if that invitation is still in force, I should like to accept. Why, I, I don't know what to say. Uh... Well, you could say bah humbug, a retort I heartily repent of and shall never use again. Or you could say, come in. Come in? Why, of course, uh, of course you shall come in. <laughs> Hurrah! Um, Uncle Scrooge, um, uh, you have made us both very happy. Uh, may I introduce you to my wife, uh, Janet? Uh, Janet, my Uncle Scrooge. Ah, uh, my dear. It is plain to me why my nephew chose you among women. You are indeed every bit as lovely as I've heard. Why, thank you, Uncle Scrooge. We are very happy that you're here. I am so sorry for the things I said about Christmas, and sorry for the poor reception I gave you yesterday, of which you were so undeserving. I see the image of my sister in your face, I loved her, you know, and she you. I know it, Uncle Scrooge. She loved you very much and wished until her dying day that we should always be close. And so we are, Fred. And so we shall be. So we shall be. Fifteen and <clears throat> twenty-one. Six, carry the one, twenty-four. And carry the two, thirty-one, and eight, and nine. Hello, you, Cratchit. Yes, sir. Cratchit, what do you mean by coming in this time of day? Why, I'm very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. Yes, you are. Yes, yes, I think you are. Oh, it's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. It shall not be repeated. I, I was making rather merry myself yesterday, sir. Uh, well, I shall tell you what, my friend. I'll not stand for this any longer. Therefore, Bob Cratchit, I'm going to raise your salary. <laughs> Mr. Scrooge, uh, uh, are you quite yourself, sir? Oh, no, no. Thank heaven I'm not quite myself. Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, my good fellow. Merry a Christmas than I've ever given you in many a year. I shall raise your salary, and we shall see what we can do for Tiny Tim and the rest of your family. <laughs> and and we'll discuss this this very afternoon over a Christmas bowl of punch. <laughs> and Bob Cratchit, make up that fire. You make it up and buy another cold scuttle before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Indeed. 
God blesses everyone. God bless, bless us, everyone. Yay. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone.